It's been around about uh, two years since my colleagues, uh, Roni Prime and Dirashata, presented the idea of uh, offloading uh, connection tracking in uh, NetDev 18 since uh, it was upstream in kernel 5.7. Uh, it has been a uh, long and sometimes a uh, bumpy road, uh, but it would not have been possible without uh, the community work and some of the credit goes to the people listed here. Uh, the first is Aaron from Red Hat for holding those bi-weekly meetings with all the relevant uh, stakeholders regarding this, including uh, Mellanox, Netronome, Intel, and Broadcom. Actually, these meetings had a few guest appearances by David Miller himself. Um, Marcello from Red Hat, who helped uh, during the development and the uh, code reviews before all this went upstream. Uh, Jiri, who helped with the TC integration and actually a lot of the system design and the platform to, to make everything work together. And a very special thanks to Pablo, who through joint work and while we were working together, uh, made possible to take, uh, to extend NF uh, flow table offload and to make it the platform for offloading established connections to TC. Um, actually, we're going to go in depth about this work in this presentation. So what are basically going to describe uh, today? We're, we're, well, let's first start off by just uh, reminding ourselves what is connection tracking, why, what is it used for, why is it to, makes a lot of sense to, to offload this, uh, this action. Um, we will continue to discuss the um, offloading of established connections and what it takes to offload only the established connections. And then lastly, we'll show the connection, we'll have a high level overview of the connection tracking hardware model and we'll see what is needed from the platform in order to properly integrate with it. So just a quick reminder about what is connection tracking. So connection tracking is a building block. Uh, it's not a system by itself, but it's a building block but used by other systems, mainly to provide the, the ability to do stateful packet filtering. So what this building block provides is basically um, a database of connections, giving us, the giving us the capability that once a packet uh, comes into the system, we're basically able to look up this database and understand um, at what stage the connection is of this uh, packet that just came in. So uh, when a packet comes into the system, we can query the database and understand if this packet is the first packet that we see on that connection, this is a new connection. If this packet is part of an established connection that already had, uh, had bi-directional communication, or this packet is, is new, but it is related to, or it is related to some other connection that already exists. Um, once we do this database lookup, we can also associate with this packet or this connection more precisely um, a user-defined um, user defined data in the form of the 32-bit mark on a, or a 128-bit label. Uh, in addition, connection tracking uh, model can perform NAT if it is uh, required. And lastly, it can also validate the packet. For example, uh, it can, for example, check that, uh, TC, that uh, the sequence of this uh, uh, packet in a TCP connection is within the expected uh, sliding window. We will note that this validation can be controlled with the TCP liberal flag. Uh, as we said, the uh, connection tracking is a building block. It is used by multiple user space applications such as IP tables, NFT, and also open vSwitch in order to uh, provide uh, users with the ability to configure stateful packet filtering. So connection tracking in TC, to basically add connection tracking support to TC, uh, to TC we needed to add a connection tracking action and a classifier. Um, the TC action actually um, reuses the net filter contract model. So basically when packet comes into the TC action, um, it calls the net filter contract model, which it does the connection lookup, does the NAT, and it sets the city state mark and label on the SKB. Uh, we also provide the ability to query and match uh, on the city state that was initialized to, uh, so we can do the packet steering according to this information. So we actually extended the flower classifier to also be able to match on the city state mark and label as it is, on, as it is referenced in the SKB. 
The classifier and actions were added and introduced to kernel 5.3 at uh, this reference, uh, at, the, at the, the series that is referenced here. Now let's see how connection tracking is used in a, in a, in a real use case. Um, suppose we are running uh, a VM, which is uh, connected to a virtual function that is exposed from a NIC. And this VM is running a web server. Now the system administrator or the network administrator would like to uh, enforce a policy, basically saying that it would allow ingress HTTP traffic to go to that VM, to go to that server. And it wants to make sure that any traffic that is leaving this server will only be on established connections. Basically what we want is that um, um, connections uh, that packets leaving the server will only be for replies that came in from legitimate requests. So in order to program that into the system uh, in the form of, uh, so if we have a system in, that has a virtual switch, um, the policy can be implemented in the virtual switch itself, saying basically that packets that come from the uplink um, and those are HTTP packets that, that that can be classified using uh, by looking at the TCP destination port 80. Then we would like to send this packet to the connection tracking database. And if this is a new connection, maybe this is a, um, the first packet that we see on that connection, we basically want to uh, commit or, or add this connection into the database and forward this packet to the VM. Otherwise, if it is an established connection, then we would just forward it to that VM. On the other way around, if a packet came from out of the VM, that means that we will receive it on the representer in that VM if we're working in a switch dev model. Then uh, we would like to take this packet, send it to the connection tracking model, do a connection lookup. And if this is part of an established connection, then we would like the packet go out uh, through the uplink uh, interface. Or if this is an, uh, not an established connection, if this is like an in, a new or invalid packet, we would just want to drop it. So this is how we're basically allowing all ingress traffic that is coming into the server to be accepted and recording the connection tracking database. And we're only allowing packets going out of the server to be, um, to be forwarded only if they are part of an established connection. Offloading the connection tracking action is a bit tricky. Um, the reason for that is that um, Current hardware does not have the stateful engines that will be able to do uh, exactly what the net filter contract um, uh, module is doing in software. So that means that even, so that, so what we basically want to do is, is we want to still rely on the software to take care of the connections set up, tear down and aging of the connections, but once the connections enter the established state, then there's actually not much that is done in software in terms of, of stateful processing other than uh, TCP window validation, which can also be controlled using the, the, um, using the uh, TCP liberal flag uh, in software. So what we actually want to do is to partially offload the connection tracking action, making sure that packets that are part of uh, uh, of, the, of the setup or, or teardown sequence will be processed in software, but packets that are going through connections that are in, in established state will go through hardware. For that to work, we would need the platform to notify the drivers which connections enter and exit, when connections enter and exit the, uh, the established state. And that is the new mechanism that needs to be developed. So when we started uh, looking at this problem, there were a few entry points that we identified where we can start implementing um, this mechanism that would notify drivers when connections become established. The first, of course, is NF contract itself. NF contract is the model that does the connection tracking. It obviously knows when connectors enter and leave the established state. It has um, timeout mechanism and a connection and aging mechanisms. And, and, and what we need to do is somehow hook it up with uh, callbacks to notify drivers when these events are happening. Another alternative is to, is to integrate with the action city um, um, uh, module. The action city actually calls 
uh, NF contract module, and from its return value, it can know when connections are uh, entering and exiting established things. Um, what it is missing is the aging mechanism because aging is transparent to Action City because it's done internally in the contract. And of course, it also would have to integrate with, um, with the drivers for notifications. The third option, and this is actually the option that we used, is to, is to integrate with NF flow tables. Now, NF flow table is the mechanism that uh, was added to kernel 416. And the motivation for it was actually the realization that packets that uh, go through connections that are in established state always do the same thing. So what can be done is that if we would put um, a flow table um, in the beginning, before we start the ingress processing, to check if the packet that was just received is part of an established connection, then basically we can just do the packet manipulation that is required, such as uh, NAT header rewrites and maybe PTL decrement, and then just forward this packet to the, egress device, to the relevant egress device. If we have this setup in place, then we can basically bypass all the, all the chain, the normal chain processing that in, in, in NFT being the ingress, pre-routing, routing, and post-routing uh, logic, uh, bypass everything and go from ingress processing directly to the egress processing. So what it appears is that we have a flow table, okay? This flow table identifies connections that are in established state. And, there is, and, and it just bypasses everything and continues to egress. But uh, the, the thing that it also bypasses is the NF contract itself. So if the packets don't go through NF contract, then the, patch, then, then the connections can first um, age in contract because contract doesn't know that packets went through that connections. And, and also um, uh, connection engine is not really managed because um, uh, it, it happened somewhere else. So NF flow tables also has its own aging mechanism where it ages the connections that exist in the NF flow table um, autonomous, in, autonomously from, uh, from NF contract. Actually, it was, there, was, there is integration with NF contract saying that when a connection is now being handled by NFT flow table, then uh, uh, the flow table is the one that owns this connection. That means it flags to the end of contract that it should not manage the agent of that connection and it's managed somewhere else. So this is another great building robot that we have in NFT flow table. So we have um, a database of, of established connections, agent is being taken care of, and the only thing that we're missing is this hook into the driver offloads. Now, luckily for us, and, and also Pablo, who is the maintainer of this, uh, of this net filter code, is that we both wanted to offload this flow table. We want to offload this table from TC for this, con for this connection tracking offload work, and Pablo wanted to offload this flow table in order to accelerate the processing through NFT in hardware. So it really made sense for us for, to, for us both to start to work together and devise and, and try to generalize a bit the flow table mechanism in a way that it will be able to, to, to be it, for it to be part of the core engines, for it to be able to create, instantiate, and manage flow tables from two different modules and, and sharing the capability of offloading the connections in that table. Let's see how we would use this table from the TC perspective. Okay, so assuming that we have this NF flow table that contains the entries of established connections, then when a packet comes into Action City, what we can do is to first look up this connection in this flow table. If this is an established connection, they would, we would hit this hash, we will find the connection, and then we will be able to set the city info on the SKB. And basically then we're done. Um, if uh, although the connection is not established and for some reason it is not part of this NF flow table, then we will continue to, to send this packet to the NF contract module and it will set the CT info in the SKB where we can continue to do classification. So, so this is how we would uh, in, uh, integrate with this NF flow table in software. 
And actually, this would be the table that we will wish to, to offload when we offload action CT. Um, let's just first understand then, then what we need basically is to somehow, so, so what we would need is action CT to manage this table, basically create, destroy, uh, and instantiate entries on that table. So, so how is this done? So uh, action CT creates a flow table per CT zone. Um, the first CT action that, that is created on that zone also creates the flow table. The last CT action that is deleted uh, using this zone also deletes this flow table. Whenever a connection enters the established state, a flow table uh, entry is created. Um, when this uh, connection is leaving the connection, the established state, it is deleted from this flow table. Aging is transparent to action CT because it is internally managed by the NF flow table and the CT is not, uh, and action CT is not aware of this. Um, integrating this in, with action CT, um, this work was introduced in kernel 5.6 it's six in this reference uh, patch set series. Next is how do we notify drivers when entries are added or removed from this flow table? So before the how, uh, first let's discuss uh, the what. Um, what is notified to the driver when something happens? So basically what we want to, what we want to communicate to the driver is a flow offload object, the existing flow offload object that is shared, uh, that, that is now shared by, by NFT and, uh, and TC. And this flow offload object has a match parameter, which basically in this use case, it matches based on the zone and the five tuple and a list of actions that needs to be executed on a, a successful match. The actions that we would like to execute is first uh, a city meta action. This is a new action that we introduced to this work. This action sets uh, the mark label and, uh, and the city state uh, that, uh, that uh, and also it provides a reference to the NF city contract object. Uh, and in addition, we might have um, NAT manual action, basically packet manual actions that do NAT, either source NAT or destination NAT, uh, source test IP or source test uh, that needs to be handled. Now, how is it notified? So, so it is notified in a, actually it is using the same um, uh, TC block structure that have an array of, uh, of callbacks that should be called on a certain, uh, when a certain event is happening. Um, but in this case, it is the drivers themselves that register uh, themselves to the block and not the platform. Uh, the reason for that is that registering from the platform is a bit tricky. Uh, if we would like to register from the action city, for example, we want the action city to register the driver, the problem is that the action city does not have, um, does not know of the net devices, it doesn't know which net devices now use this action. Uh, NF flow table, if we want to uh, NF flow table register the callbacks, NF flow table is also not aware of these devices. Um, TC is aware of the devices that are participating in this flow, but TC is not aware of the existence of the NF flow table because it is internal to action CP. So what we're left with is the drivers themselves. Um, when uh, the CT filter flow is offloaded, the, uh, in the offload uh, data structure, we also provide a reference to the flow table that represents this zone. And once the driver receives this parameter, it's able to call the NF flow table at CD del CD methods. And this is how it registers itself when the first, uh, when uh, in the first rule that uses this flow table and deletes its callback when this is the last rule that uses the flow table or when the driver unloads. Um, the Mellanox implementation, the, the Mellanox driver implementation uh, was implemented in kernel 5.7 and it is done in, this, in the series that is referenced here. So let's summarize what we're doing with this established connections offload. So we started off, the motivation for all of this is that because action city offload is actually offloading the established connections, 
um, we need to uh, we we develop uh, a flow table object that is managed by TC. Uh, it is created by TC uh, when when needed. When flows uh, become established, uh, entries are added to this table. This table is is used first by software. Uh, it, 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 it can accelerate the software processing where it bypasses the NF contract if there's an established currency in that flow and we already know what we need to do with this uh, package. And it is also used for hardware offload uh, in order to notify the drivers on established connections. Uh, I remind here that connections set up in teardown, the packages that are responsible for this always go up to software and therefore it is managed by software. Aging is managed by NF flow tables. Basically, when connection is aged, an entry is deleted from the flow table, and this is how this, and therefore it's also deleted from the hardware. Um, we would note that also when flows are offloaded, the software also needs to get the statistics from the hardware because the software is not aware of packets going through uh, the flows anymore. And there's also a statistics callback uh, that is implemented by the device drivers to, to, to um, reflect the, uh, the connection statistics to the software in a very similar manner that it is done in TC offloads. Um, we also enhance the monitoring capabilities, basically letting the user know if a connection is offloaded or not. So we extended the NF contract procfs. Um, the NF contract procfs already had a flag, uh, the offload flag, saying that a connection is owned by NF flow table. This was done uh, when uh, NF flow uh, table was introduced to the kernel. So when we take ownership for that, uh, there is an offload flag that is reflecting here. We also added the hardware offload flag indicating that this connection is now in hardware. This flag was also introduced in kernel 5.7 in this in the patch set that is referenced here. Let's have a quick now let's have a quick view about what's happening in the hardware model when we're offloading connection tracking. So I just remind you that that the hardware basically replicates the software model. The hardware is um, connection tracking is a, a multi-chain process because the first chain would send the packet to, the, to do a connection tracking database lookup. And only once the lookup is complete, we're basically able to steer the packet based on the connection tracking state. So we would call the connection tracking and recirculate back to the packet classification, but now we can also match on the city state. So connection tracking logic is broken down to at least two chains, okay? And, and when we offload that, we're not really aware what the packet is doing. We're just offloading the filters one by one as they are added to the system. So the first filter that is added to the system is a filter that is defined here in this example on chain zero prior one. Uh, which does some TCP classification on destination port and then sends to the connection tracking action and continues on chain two. When we receive, so in hardware, we have a table per chain prior. Every chain prior has a specific table. So here it's chain zero prior one. So we will add this table to the hardware table representing chain zero prior one. We will add the flow matches, maybe matching on IP, TCP, and the destination uh, TCP port. And the action would be, well, we could decap if this was a VXLAN, uh, for example, or, or a tunneled packet. And then instead of doing connection tracking action, we basically jump to a table that has the connection, the, the connection tracking entries that are established. When we receive the offload request to offload this command, we actually see that this command tries to match on this filter, tries to uh, match on the new and tracked uh, city state. And uh, this is, we know that this is something that we cannot offer. So we basically don't do anything with this and we don't put this uh, flow in hardware. When we receive the third um, filter uh, to, off uh, to offload, then this filter is defined on chain two prior one. So we basically add it to the chain two prior one table. We match on the matches in this filter. This filter matches on the IP and the city state. And then its action is to forward to um, here a representer, which in the embedded piece, which is translated to a V port. So it's just in this example, V port one. What happens when the connection becomes established? So established connection, again, is another entry point for the hardware offload. An established connection 
write, uh, offload it to the city table, to a global city table that is managed by the hardware, where it matches on the city um, zone and a city on the city zone in five tuple. And if, it, if there is a match, then it sets the, the city state on some hardware registers. And then it continues to jump on chain two prior one table. Once all of this is performed, we can see that this, pro this packet is, is actually processed in hardware. When it starts, it does the initial classification, jumps to the city action. If there is an established, it sets the city state. If this, if this is established, then the city state mark and label will be initialized and will continue in chain two, which will do another match and forward to this B table. This is basically how we replicate the software model in hardware. The thing is, is that once we start with this multi-table architecture in hardware and we're, we're jumping from one table and all of this is done asynchronously and not atomically, then we're basically exposed to hardware misses. That means that um, the hardware can, can start the processing, but not complete it, okay? In this example, for example, if, this, if, if we were in the initial state and we also, we also did the first rule, then we would do the matching, jump to the city table, the city table would not have the entry and it would miss. And in every miss, what we need to do is to continue in software wherever the hardware left off. And the reason for that is that the, the hardware may have already updated filter statistics and, and, the, count, and the packets will be counted twice. And in addition, um, it could have processed some packet manual action, so the packet may have been modified. And if we would start processing the packet from the beginning, we will actually not match because it's not the original packet anymore. We can think the most trivial example to think about is, is, is encapsulated packets. The first rule may have decapsulated the packet, and now we have a miss. So when we will miss, we will need to communicate with the driver to, to start from the chain that missed and to restore the tunnel information that was decapsulated. So, uh, um, so this can be seen in this example where when we do some uh, matches, we actually have the established connection state, but then we miss on the second rule. And basically we would have here uh, the software start processing from TC chain two while restoring the tunnel info and also restoring the city state because the, the software expects already to have an initialized um, city state on the SKB. So what we were missing in terms of the platform in order to enable that is to somehow communicate to TC where to start. And, and, and this was, and in order to provide this information, we had to extend uh, the SKB uh, via a TC SKB extension where we could store the last um, a chain that was processed in hardware and, and, and having this as the beginning, uh, at the beginning chain for TC to start processing. Actually, this requirement is not uh, just for hardware misses. It's actually also relevant for Open vSwitch because open, once Open vSwitch offloads this, then Open vSwitch relies on the TC data path uh, to do on TC to do the data path processing. And, and the way it works is that TC comes first in the RX uh, pipeline in the kernel. So TC is done first and only then the Open vSwitch RX handler is being processed. So, so again, because we have this multi-chain architecture, um, TC can start processing the chains and then it can jump. Uh, so, so, so Open vSwitch has the same notion of chains inter which is called um, recirculations and, and Open vSwitch recirculations are directly mapped to TC chains. So TC can start processing the packet in some chains and then it can jump to a chain which is not offloaded to TC, maybe because uh, there's no TC support for that action or because asynchronously the, the pack it, um, it, it was not offloaded to TC yet. And, and then TC would miss, it would not do what to continue with this packet and the packet would go, it would continue down the kernel pipeline and will enter the open vSwitch um, RX handler. In this case, the open vSwitch also needs to start processing from recirculation one in this example, and not from zero from the same reasons because the packet first was counted and then it could have been recirculated, it could have been uh, manipulated and we didn't know how to do. So we use the same TC SKB extension to also communicate the last chain that was processed in TC that may be used in open vSwitch. This um, extension was introduced already in kernel 5.3 in this uh, patch set. 
So to summarize the work that was done, this summary is actually in the chronological order that the, the series were applied to, to the kernel. Um, we first needed to introduce uh, TC connection tracking action classifier uh, to software, even in software. So this was introduced first. Then we extended um, the SKB to allow um, uh, communicating the recirculation ID uh, to TC to allow TC to continue from where, to allow OVS to continue from where TC left off. Then we did the modification in NetFilter to extend uh, the flow table to support hardware offload. This is the work that we've done uh, jointly with Pablo. Then um, we used this, uh, these uh, NetFilter infrastructure in Action City. We first used it in software offload. Basically, we populated the, the NetFilter. Um, we created the NetFilter, the NF uh, flow tables, and we populate them with established connection. We used it in software. Then we added the, um, the monitoring uh, capability for, uh, to monitor uh, connections that are in hardware. Uh, and lastly, we, uh, we um, 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 upstream the melon of driver implementation for, for connection tracking also. Now a word about uh, performance um, um, before we conclude. Um, we, we're actually um, still working on the perform on a full performance report in our lab. We will uh, we will uh, publish it when it will be available. But what we can say is that um, when we look at large scale, for example, when we have systems that have uh, that that have a, a connection track database that has about uh, one million connections then we see that the software performance is about 1 million connections per second, one, sorry, 1 million packets per second. And when we offload, we're basically able to achieve um, 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 uh, about, uh, 20, um, about line rate performance for 25 GIG uh, interfaces. That means um, uh, about 23 million packets per second. These are, these are like uh, encapsulated uh, traffic, 114 bytes over 25 GIG ports. So we're basically able to achieve line rate uh, performance um, versus about 1 million packets per second. Um, we, we can think about it for, for about 5% um, uh, port uh, utilization, uh, bandwidth utilization compared to 100% bandwidth utilization with hardware offload. That's it. Thank you all. Uh, so thank you. So um, for the purposes of, purposes of discussion, I'd like to maybe divide this up into two parts. Uh, the first part, the, the APIs, which I think um, were covered very well in the presentation. So the APIs to set this up, uh, the commands, the extensions, uh, I think that's, that's one category. So obviously you wanna have the correct APIs and make it generic uh, to control connection tracking offload. But the second, it's a little more um, on the philosophical side. And, and some of the questions uh, are going to quickly get into these. So when we offload connection tracking and hardware, this instantly creates uh, some convolutions. So for instance, first question people are gonna ask is how many, how many flows can you offload? And as we know, um, hardware memory is almost always uh, a fraction of host memory. So what happens when somebody tries to push the limits and we go beyond that? So that gets us into the need for state evictions and things like that. So in that regard, um, and, and this problem really is no different than any other device in the network that's doing connection tracking. When we do that, it creates um, those sort of headaches. The other one that, that comes to mind is, what if we have multiple device systems and the receive path and the transmit paths are asymmetric such that the receive path is one device and the um, transmit path is another. And in fact, that could actually change in the middle of the flow. So these are things that we need to consider. Um, the multi-path problem is basically unsolved by stateful firewalls, unfortunately. Um, but in the host case, it's kind of interesting because the host itself, had it actually been doing the connection tracking, would see all of those packets. 
So um, with that, let's see, uh, uh, let's go through some of the questions. Um, the concept of flow state, could that work for UDP as well, or is it strictly TCP? It also, also UDP, UDP and TCP. Okay, so presumably in UDP, since it's a stateless protocol, we're doing that kind of creating soft state um, as opposed to TCP where we're tracking the actual um, TCP connection state? Well, actually, even in TCP connection, like for connection tracking, the, it enters the established state when it sees the bidirectional traffic. It's not really aware of the TCP. It's not, it's not uh, the TCP protocol that is, uh, that is dictating this. So the only thing is that TCP has, um, has, um, has a very, it, it can shut down connections uh, explicitly. For UDP, they will only age. Um, so, so, so we actually offload both the TCP and UDP. Okay, um, so in the case of TCP, what happens if we get a, a regular packet, not a SIN, that we don't recognize? Would we try to create a connection state for this? Again, I'm not, I wasn't following. So, so in the case of TCP, suppose we receive a uh, plain TCP packet without the send flag, without the thin flag um, mm -hmm. for some connection. Mm -hmm. And suppose the device can't, can't identify that. So it never saw the three-way handshake. What would happen? So it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's either the connection is identified by the hardware or not. Okay. Every time that, that, so for example, when we receive a packet and there's the CT action, so we basically process the packet through the CT table that we store in hardware. So if, if we don't have a record for this connection, then we will miss and it will go up to software and then software will, will continue the processing of that packet. So it's either in hardware or not in hardware and, and there's, no, there's nothing in the middle there. So, uh, so, so it will always be handled correctly. So, so we, copy, we copycat what is the software is doing. We are, not, we are offloading only established connections. Well, sort of, right? But if, if we're doing this in UDP, there's no concept of established connections. So we, we have a bit of a, a disparity in the models. So I'm assuming in UDP, when we receive a packet we don't recognize, we just create a, a state for it. Uh, but TCP, it's a little, a little more difficult. And if we're doing a firewall of it or something like that, then, then this could have other ramifications. So again, so, so we, are, we are offloading. So we are not choosing what to do. We bring the, uh, the packet to the software and what the software is decide, we're doing the same thing. We're just offloading if the, the connection is established. And, 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 as, and as I said for UDP also, UDP has an established state in connection tracking. Basically once it sees bi-directional traffic, it's established according to the definitions of, of connection tracking. So, um, so, so, so even though, even though UDP is stateless, okay, it, it, it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't have connections, but for connection tracking, it still has an established state. Okay, that's an interesting question. So, if we receive a UDP packet that we don't recognize, what happens? So, so, so again, if 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 the packet is not in hard, well, uh, not recognized, I'm not really clear what, what you mean by not recognized, but if the packet is not, if, if for some reasons we don't have this five tuple in hardware, then we just, then, then, then our hardware just will send up this packet to the relevant representative. So, so, um, so it will continue processing in software. And this is the, the work that we did to make sure that the process, that, that the software receives all the state that was that will continue processing according to the last state that was um, stored by the hardware. Meaning that if the hardware already jumped to multiple to its to a certain chain, then we will be able to restore the last chain that was processed in hardware. If 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 it went through CT already and it already has some CT state, we will restore the CT state. If the packet was decapsulated and now um, the, the the packet itself does not have the outer headers like the tunnel headers. We will restore the tunnel info and put it on the SKB. So, from a software perspective, uh, it would just continue processing from the point where the hardware left off. So, if you started processing the packet, hit some, hit wanted to do connection tracking, there was no record in hardware for that. 
it goes up to software, so it has everything it needs to continue its processing in software. Okay, so there was a question, um, is this appropriate for short-lived connections? Yeah, that's a good question. Obviously, short-lived connections, and there are many of those um, we know, um, they're, they're, they wouldn't benefit that much from, from offloads. But um, as we know, uh, um, and, and we know even more that, that, that uh, internet traffic and, and web traffic is, has um, a fat tail distribution. So, um, so, so currently we don't make the distinctions between, um, between short-lived and long-lived connect, between mice flows and elephant flows, but um, we do want it, we, we had an attempt, but we need to revise it of, of, of introducing to TC some type of offload policy saying um, uh, some type of policy um, that would uh, characterize when we would like to offload the connection. So, so, so the first parameters that come to mind is the, is the number of packets or number of bytes that go through a connection. And, and once you reach a certain threshold, um, um, uh, only then this connection will be, established, will be offloaded. So, um, and, this, and this would also like, give a lot of value for the offload and also would relieve some of the stress of um, the insertion rate because basically the bottleneck for this is the keep of, of how many flows the hardware is able to, um, to introduce per second. I don't quite understand that. So if I'm counting the number of packets or bytes on a connection, don't I have to establish a state in the device to be able to count the packets? No, so the idea is, I mean, again, a, a connection is is offloaded to hardware when the software decides to offload it, mean, meaning okay. when Action City decides to offload it. So, so we could postpone the offload. So currently, when a connection enters the established state, this is when we create the flow table entry, and and then it's offloaded to hardware. But we can postpone the 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 when we create this record on the flow table to those according to those counters. So, so we can still process the packet in, in software, okay? It would go through Action City. Action City would, would count the bytes on every connection and it would then be able to know, and then it would be able to apply this policy. So when it would hit, like for example, the number of packet marks, then, then it would just create, only then it would create an, an a flow table entry and then it would be offered. Okay, uh, Jamal had a question. I, I guess he's asking, um, why do we need to offload? Is this primarily for NAT? It's primarily for um, it's uh, it's it's a, it's the mechanisms that users use for um, for security policies. For example, in OpenStack, this is the mechanism that's used for every every um, every um, yeah, well every um, ACL that is is stateful. So, um, so so this is so this is one primary reason for security groups, and the other one is of course uh, NAT. Uh, what matches can be used to direct packet to the connection tracking table? Basically everything. It, it, it's, it's all the matches. I mean, we integrate with Flower. So, so connection tracking is an action. So once you have whatever matches you want and you decide that according to those matches, you need to go through connection tracking, that just goes through connection tracking. So uh, this is along the lines of my earlier comment, but is it possible to fill the hardware table with partial connections and exhaust the hardware resources? In other words, um, can this sustain a denial of service attack? Yeah. So, so, um, so, assuming, I mean, the way that the way that it works is that um, um, the the this the I mean the. Um, the offload itself obviously is done by the driver, right? So, so, so the platform just creates a, a net filter um, and then a flow table entry, and then this there is a callback to the driver to offload this. Now, if the driver decides to not offload this connection, okay, because of scale issues or some other issues, then it would just not offload it. But the way that it works is that every time that the packet goes through. Uh, but, but so basically, every time that the packet will go through this connection, there will be reattempts to upload this to the hardware. So the driver would always receive notifications to 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 um, to uh, offload this connection, and 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 obviously once if it if it is successful and the connection is in hardware, then then the packet would not go through software anymore and would not expect this. 
So the, the, um, the general idea behind this is saying that we would expect packets to be in hardware. If they're not, then something is wrong. And we would basically, this is the way for us to be trying to resend the, the connections back to hardware. Now, regarding um, um, uh, denial of service, um, so, so it really defines, I mean, this, first of all, we offload only when connections are established. So, the, so all the denial of service stacks that come before connections is established are, are not managed, mitigated here anyways. And, uh, and, um, and, uh, and uh, obviously now there's um, um, very limited, uh, actually there's very limited mechanisms for, uh, for controlling the, the load that, uh, the, the, like the queues and the offload uh, and load that goes into the offload mechanism. So maybe that could be um, that could be um, um, researched further. So it, it's up to the host uh, stack to decide which connections to offload and which to run in the host. Is that true? Basically, yes. Okay. And so so if there's a policy, it would have to be implemented in the host. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. If, if a vendor, if a vendor would like to implement some type of policy, he has he has the ability to do it. So that's an interesting point. Currently, would this there, be a there is no. Go ahead. Yeah. So currently, there is no uh, definition what is going. So everything is going to the hardware. What what is established is going directly to the hardware. But as uh, Oz mentioned, we want to add in the future, you know, more way to distinguish what is going to the software. What is going to the hardware? Maybe if it's the first packet, or maybe later. Uh, if, for example, by definition, we know that the DNS packet are not uh, worth uh, to offload. Uh, also, I'm not sure. Did we cover also the FTP, the um, the one that said need the helper function, also no. not to offload. This was not um, this one was not uh, thoroughly tested yet. But but what I was saying more yeah. is that we we assume that even if a driver not not the necessary what we do in Manonox we all float everything. But suppose there's a vendor what I was referring to that question. Suppose there's a vendor that would like to control because the scale that goes into hardware meaning that he doesn't want to offload anything because of his reasons. Then then the platform makes sure that as long as packets come into this connection the drivers will be notified. It's not a one shot. Um, it's not a one-shot um, uh, opportunity to offload this connection. So, so even if a driver, so, so this is in a way that, 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 that the driver is able to uh, control its own scalability and it will not be, and the platform will notify him of packets going through that connection. So that's what the point I was making. So, so that, that's a little bit, um, I don't wanna say worrisome, but it, it seems like the host stack has the best visibility of what connections it would want to offload. And so it looks like um, right now, uh, the Melanox device, for instance, is limited to 2 million connections. But I'm thinking, what if we have a host stack that has 10 million connections and it wants to optimize the offload? So of those 10 million, what if only 2 million are active and the other ones are idle? So it, it makes no sense to just persistently offload a connection that's that's completely inactive. So it seems like the host would be wanting to manage that. That, that doesn't seem like that's a driver or vendor thing. So um, it would be nice if we presented to the host the, the APIs and all the controls saying, um, here's the number, maximum number of connections we have. So take your, workload and figure out which connections you want to offload and which you don't and really leave it up to this post stack. And then once we get into that sort of policy, obviously it's going to get pretty quickly into, we want to have eBPF to um, be able to gather the statistics and basically make arbitrary policies. Um, so the host can customize for the actual or for the particular workload. So I know that's probably a leap forward, but you know, again, this, I think management, resource management is going to be critical in this sort of thing. I think you're right. I think it's a good, I think it's a good follow. Yeah. So next question, what is the learning rate? How many new flows can be configured to the hardware per second? 
So this is again, this is vendor specific and talk for, for our hardware. Um, only we're at, um, um, I mean, I'm having a blackout on the number. One of you remember how many? Um, yeah. So currently, and you know, we are always, I think there is a huge effort that we did to improve TC. Um, and I think now we are reaching roughly about a uh, few hundreds kilo new flows per second. So, and, and we're working to improve it. Yeah, so yeah, it's about 100. So 100 case, 100 case uh, new flows per second. Roni, that's a software software answer. What's the has hardware answer? No, that's the hardware. No, no, this is the hardware answer. Okay. Where, yeah, yes, remember, this is not true TC, right? This is from the hardware itself, from the kernel itself, right? Because we are already inside the kernel, we not need to get the TC lock. Uh, kind of a follow-up question. How are connections removed from the connection tracking? So if this is if, if this is a TCP connections and it's like a, they have an, an orderly shutdown, then the, the teardown flags, the, the fin and the reset flags are sent to software and it's sent. And, well, let's say this, they're removed from software, okay? Now there's two paths that software can remove connections. Either they are aged and, and we have, and the aging, and by the way, the aging is also something that we'd like to control currently. It's hard coded, the, uh, the, the hardware aging is set currently for 30 seconds. And, uh, or it's, uh, it, there's, a, there's an orderly teardown and, and through like TCP teardown uh, sequence, these are connections are deleted. So, so it, it is software that is deleting the connections. And um, one thing that's probably worth noting here is that the C of load is a synchronous operation while CT of load is asynchronous. You know, also, also when you say antihonix is because it's coming from a pocket, right? Can no, but the same. But the could you repeat that? Sorry, could you repeat that statement, please? What's synchronous and what's asynchronous? I tell. I, I mean, so synchronizing it's when you had a TC action that's adding a rule. Asynchronizing. Oh, I'm not sure. So I, it's, uh, asynchronics is when, when you have a pocket like uh, the SYNAC that is generating an inside the kernel an event that's going to the driver. So actually, actually, the offloads is, is also asynchronous. Once, uh, once, once we understand that 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 this should be offloaded, this is happening on uh, on another screen. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brianna, do you have a question? Okay. So the, the work that Vlad has been doing is, is, is it was batching from user space. I think he's, he's getting more than 100,000 per second, but it's batch process. Right, so he batches a bunch of flows through TC to the hardware. Yes. Uh, so, here it's, so here it's more than that, right? Because we don't need to get the, from TC. You're not getting it an event from a Netlink event from user space. Yeah, it's, it's coming from the kernel itself. Yeah, you're doing only one at a time. But I'm saying that the capacity of uh, offloading to hardware according to his numbers, and he, he did some, uh, he showed some numbers again on this TC workshop a few days back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a few hundred thousand per second on your hardware. Yeah, but, yeah. but, yeah, but what one is saying is that now we have two entry points. One, one is TC offloads, which is what Vlad presented. And this is like uh, the NFT offload, which, is, which, is, which goes through just in kernel. So, so the update rate there and is- also and so the update and rate it's also multi -thread. Sorry? And it's also multi-thread because there's to, to get in an established uh, event, it's from packets. So if you have RSS, yep. of course, 
it's coming from multiple threads. Are you, are you saying you, you're doing more capacity through NetFilter this way? Yeah, I, I, I there the software performance is, I don't have the numbers, but it's in the up hundreds of thousands for sure. It's like the, the hardware is the bottleneck, not the software, for sure. Okay, I find that surprising, but okay. <laughs> Is the flow table a subset of connection tracking table that hails only candidates, established connections in parentheses, and is a flow table common to both NetFilter and TC? Again, the, the, the flow the, the flow table is 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 an the flow table is is, is just a, an infrastructure. Um, we chose to use it in Action TC to store only the uh, established events. Um, uh, what was the second part of the question? It was not. Uh... Amritha, do you want to follow up? Uh, hi, Oz. The question was, uh, I think I probably missed the part where you were explaining the specifics of uh, offloading this. So, uh, so the uh, net filter manages and keeps a track of uh, all the connections, right? Uh, the aging and uh, it, the CT table is essentially a table of all kinds of flows, uh, all states established, new and such. But then uh, the offload candidates need to be communicated to the TC for which you select only the connections that are in established state. So is the middle layer between uh, net filter and TC uh, the flow offload infrastructure in TC or the flow offload table, which has only the connect, uh, the offload candidates. Exactly. So we yeah. So we we create we we generalize the flow table to to something that we can with an API that we can create from TC, and 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 we populate it with the established connections. That's right. And and there are and there and drivers can register to receive notifications on that. Table. Yes. And the action uh, action is performed only on those uh, connections in the flow of flow table, right? Right. So the flow action table is actually just just uses the generic flow offload uh, like the the flow offload structure when it has like the flow offload matches and actions as we normally have in TC. So so then when so so the input that the driver gets is that the, an entry was added to this flow table and here are the matches and here are the actions in 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 data structures, it, it is well known and, and can process. All right, thanks, Oz. Okay.